Road here. Going to do a video for you. Um, we're going to jump right into it, guys. Um, this is geomagnetic activity. I show you guys this quite often. We're over here at Space Weather. This is the best I've seen it look in a very long time. We're kind of hanging out in the middle. All right. So those of you guys that are new to my channel, um, we don't want it down here. Because what it would do is it opens us up to cosmic rays. Um, more. More cosmic rays get through. And we don't want it to get up into high storm levels either. Because then we start having electrical issues. So where it's at right now is very, very good as far as geomagnetic activity goes. Now, what I do want to talk about is this right here real quick. Okay, here's the equator of the sun. The earth sits about right here. Obviously, you see that coronal hole was directly earth-facing. It's rotating through what they call the earth strike zone, which means it's right in front of us. Okay, so about three to four days from now, we should start seeing some increased uh, solar activity impact our planet, okay? Um, and we probably will in, in the form of charged particles, which would be increased solar wind speed and higher density usually, okay? Um, but something else we have to take into consideration is this sunspot, okay? It's going to rotate straight through here too. Here in the next day or so, it's going to be right there. Why does that matter? Well, it, it's constantly like spewing some energy out, not massive, but it's sending at least a little bit of extra stuff our way. Now, we have to take this in, really in consideration when it gets in front of us because if it decides it wants to flare or have a CME right there, that would most likely we would have a better chance of it impacting us directly. Okay, that's why we pay attention to that. Now, why, is, why do we have more solar flares and CMEs around sunspots? Well, essentially, I'm going to take this down to a very basic level, okay? I know it's probably oversimplifying this, but I, I want everybody to understand. Underneath it, you, you have what positive and negative. Okay, we're just we're just going to call it that for right now. Underneath that bright area, you have a positive and negative. So as those positive and negatives get closer to each other, if they do, it's the same as if you took a positive and negative wire out of your electrical in your house. And the closer you get to it, eventually you get close enough, and zip, you hit. You see a short spark. It connects right. Basically, that's what a flare does, okay? That's why it's increased chances when the positive and negative are closer together. And there is a model I could show you. I'll show you guys in my next video that model. And actually, I think it's yellow and, I think it's yellow and blue it uses, maybe. Maybe it's blue and red. I can't remember. But I can show you guys that model, and you can see how close the positive and negative actually is. Um, so that's one of the, the parameters they use to give some sort of a, percentage of chance of us having a solar flare or a CME from that sunspot. So just, I guess at a basic level, guys, if the sunspot's, you know, facing us, obviously we have to watch it because if it does decide to flare, then it, you know, we really have to know that. So, but, um, what I want to talk to you guys about here is right here. Okay. This is the ACE data. This is the yellow line is solar wind speed. The orange line is density of that solar wind, okay? So, what you're looking at, obviously the, the wind speed here, guys, is dead nuts normal, okay? 250 to 450. That's the range. That does change if they have to raise it. You know, if they want to show us something higher, they'll change that range. So, always look there. I've made the mistake and didn't do that and made mistakes before by not doing that. Um, so, you know, learn from my mistake and always look at that. But what I want to show you guys, again, the wind speed is very normal, but the density is not. Okay. It's very low. This goes 0 0.1, as low as this graph will show. Okay. And when you're looking at the range here, this, you know, from here to here is only one unit. From here to here is actually nine. And from here to here is 90. So when you're looking at this thing and it jumps way up, you have to understand how far it's actually jumping up. So always look at your, your numbers there on the left when looking at this graph, okay? Um, but again, we should not be seeing density that low. That's like almost non-existent. I mean, there's gonna, it's always going to have some density, but I, I don't know that I've ever seen density be that low for that long of a time period. Now, why does that even matter? Well, let, let me show you, okay? 
Okay, guys, this is the the other one of the magnetosphere models I show you guys all the time. Um, but this one is the one that has the sun off to the left. Okay, and what you're looking at here, guys, this is density. This is all this is showing you the density of the particles. Um, I will be giving you a Schumann update too, guys. I got some stuff to talk about with that. But um, as you're seeing here, you're seeing um, when it goes white, that's very low density. When it goes dark blue, that's the higher density. Now, I guess this is the one I should have showed you guys when I was trying to explain how the bow shock doesn't go away, even though it looks like it might be. Um, the bow shock does change in shape and change in position, but it doesn't go away. Okay. And this right here shows you that because you'll see waves of energy come in and that out in front there, guys, that, that color will be all the same. And then you'll see waves come in of different dense materials and it goes around the bow shock. It hits the bow shock and goes around it. All right. If that bow shock wasn't like that, that density would come through in a straight line. So the bow shock is there. It doesn't go away. All right. So I just wanted to point that out. But you're seeing very low dense material here, guys. Um, we should not be seeing really that at all, really. <laughs> um, and let me show you here again. Okay, guys, this is the Australian model. Um, I don't show you guys this one enough. I should use it more, and I don't. Um, that is something that I should show you guys more often. Okay, so what you're looking at, obviously the sun's off to the left on this one. This one actually shows you the bow shock line, okay? That is actually what the bow shock really, it's a better representation because it is a line. It's not an area, okay? So... What you're seeing a lot of times on those models is the density of the material is the same on this side of the bow shock and on this side of the bow shock. That's why it looks like it goes goes away. All it's showing you is that the density is the same. It's really that simple. Um, so, again, you know, I don't want to kick a dead horse here, but the bow shock doesn't go away. It may look like it does, but it doesn't. So what this one is showing you guys, actually, it shows you the position of the bow shock. It bounces around. And it bounces around pretty dramatically sometimes. And what I'm getting ready to show you guys, I've never seen it do this for the length of time that it did. This thing will actually bounce off and go off of, the, off of this graph. Now, why is it doing that? Well, the analogy I'm going to use here is like when you were a kid kind of wrestling with your uncle. And your uncle would stick his hand out. And I've used this analogy before. And put his hand on your forehead as you're pushing against him, right? Or maybe another kid, just somebody longer arms, right? You're just wrestling around having fun. Well, the person with his hand eventually is smart enough to pull his hand back and the kid that's on the other side lunges forward and will bust his face, right? Well, that's exactly what's going on here. The solar wind is the uncle. The earth is the kid. And they're pushing together at the same speed, right? At the same strength. Well, then the solar wind decides, hey, I'm just going to drop out for a minute or the density. So it drops out. Well, we lunge forward. Okay, that's what happens. Now, is that good or bad? Well, it could be neither, but it can be bad. It could actually increase earthquake risk. And think about this for a second. We're talking about magnetics. We're not talking about geographic anything, okay? Um, when that pressure gets released and we lunge forward, so anything, mag anything, any kind of pressure that's around us gets less, okay, because we've lunged forward. So it does allow for things to move a little easier, is what I'm trying to say. And it's very, very similar. I know it's pretty simplified, and there's a whole lot of things that go with that. And again, it would be a five-hour video if I tried to explain all of it. But just that's just a very simple explanation of what actually is what you're seeing, okay? So when I play this, you're going to see this thing jumping around. And what was really strange is this proton density, which is the density that I talk about, will go to 0, 0.0. Now, that, that does not mean that it, there is no density. Okay? Just this model cannot detect 0 0.01. Okay? That means that there is density if you see that. Yes, it would be very low, but there is density there. But this model can't detect stuff that low. So it just sees it as 0, 0.0. So know that the density doesn't go away. It just gets extremely low. And you're going to notice when it gets extremely low that this line is going to bounce off the graph and go, like, all the way off the graph. You don't even see it. 
for like multiple minutes. So I just wanted to tell you what was going to happen there so you can understand it. So we'll watch it here and it's bouncing around and it don't typically bounce like, I mean it bounces some all the time, but it's going to start doing it pretty drastically here in a second. And it, it's pretty impressive. I mean, I've, like I said, I've not seen it do this for that length of time before. And there it goes. It's going to go off, off the graph there. It's going to go completely off here in a second. I mean, it's just, look, see? And then it bounces back in, goes back off again. And the whole time that it's bouncing off of the, the graph there, if you looked at the density while it was doing that, it's at almost zero. So that's why it's doing that. The, the density of the, the, the material around it isn't holding it in or keeping it in that position, and we're able to push harder. So it goes on off the, it pushes out further, changes its position. So I just wanted to show you guys that. Okay, guys, this is the Schumann. I know we've been talking about this for a couple days, um, past couple videos anyway. And um, what we're seeing here isn't nothing too crazy. Um, we are seeing some spikes. This is the latest capture from it. Um, these aren't huge, long-lasting spikes. Um, but I've been asked, you know, what are we actually looking at here? So let me explain. Okay, so what you're seeing here, guys, is a visual representation of the vibration, the frequency. Okay? Um, and how this model works is it takes data from multiple locations. Okay? And it gives you an average. So that's what you're seeing. You're, this isn't just in one location. These are multiple locations giving you data. And, and it puts it into this model, and it gives you the average of those locations. Okay? So, you know, and I have to say that because the frequency can change drastically in a very short distance. Okay? If they tried to show you every point there you wouldn't even have a visual of it very well because it would just look like an up and down graph um that's what we would see so but the overall average is what they're showing you now you know we've been talking about this dotted line right that possible code type of thing i've been talking about what's going on here what are we seeing well given what i just you know said to you guys there's actually other um schumann uh, tools and stuff you can go look at they're showing you the same the same information just in a different visual they're more line graph looking things um i use this one because i'm familiar with it but given what i just said about the average it makes that dotted line and that dash even less likely to have happened okay and the reason why, and this is why I say, just I wish they would just email me back and give me some sort of a feedback on what that is. Because if even at this point, if they told me it was a tool flaw, I would accept it and move on. Because the chances of multiple locations giving you data to be put into an average for it to show a dashed line, do you know how what the chances of that would be if that was to actually happen naturally? That right there tells you that that should, number one, no way that that's natural. Okay, so if that is actually something that we should be looking at, and it's not a tool flaw or anomaly, then that is not something that happened naturally. It's something that was done in intentionally by something intelligent. Okay, um, the only thing I would say to that, guys, is it did start down here, if you guys remember, and now it's, it's, it's migrated towards our base frequency about halfway okay now on this one something else see this big black area here on the left that's that's data we didn't get to see um that doesn't typically happen on this tool it's happened a few times early on when i was looking at this a couple three years back we'd never seen anything like that if we did see a blacked out area it would be very very short-lived okay like the tool went down or whatever but as time has went on, we're seeing more and more of these big blacked out areas, especially this year. Now, our base frequency, guys, is 7.83 right here. Okay. That's why you always see uh, data there. You see that? See how the line's always there? It never goes away. It's always there. What I've noticed, and this is where I have to be like, what the heck's going on? It's almost like we're going into a time or into a period where we've got more than one base frequency. 
okay? Because we're seeing it here, we're seeing it here, we're starting to see it right here, and even look at this, I've never seen this before, way down here. Not for that amount of time. Sorry about that, guys. But, I mean, look at that. So is that what we're seeing? Are we seeing a change in our Earth to the point that we got more than one base frequency? Now, for that to happen, is that something that's happening within the Earth itself? Is that something that's being influenced from outside by multiple different things? You know, I don't know. All I can tell you about this is this is definitely changing. And it continually is changing. And it seems like this stuff is just hanging around. These, these baselines right here are not going away anymore. So it, it would be, you know, and I'm looking down here at the bottom. And if you look here, it's like this thing took a break for a minute. And started back up. Okay. So I don't know. Um, <clears throat> all I can say is that really right here, this is the only, uh, the frequency there is really the only one that should be consistently there. But that's not what we're seeing anymore. We are now seeing, because I've been watching this for a while, right around 12, we are now seeing that stay there. That's not going away. I, I just, it's just an observation, guys, but I do think it's something we have to pay attention to. And again, I'm making a video. I've been working on it. So much data to put in there and talk about. Um, I want to get it right. Um, there's so many things that the Schumann can do to us, the frequency. Um, physically, there's so much science backing what it says. Um, there's so many things there that are definitely true and how it affects us. And that's really the basis of what I'm going to talk about. I'm not going to really, you know, I'm going to talk a, a little bit about, you know, what is causing the change in our frequency. But the main thing I want to get across is that change, what, what's it going to do to us, Right. That's really what we want to know. And if it's going to do bad stuff, can we fix it? That's another thing. So, but anyway, guys, um, I just wanted to bring that to you guys. Um, hope you guys have a great weekend. I may come to you again tomorrow night at some, at some point um, or Monday sometime. But, um, yeah, guys, God bless. Yeshua saves. And, yeah, you can still drink this Kool-Aid.